We're in the middle of Simon Chaf. We're on page Kuflamid, which is opposite of page 258. 258. <clears throat> and we are in the middle of the deepest... Sure. We are in the middle of... Someone's bringing you. We are in the middle of the deepest, the deepest chapter in Tanya, which uh, talks about the deepest concepts in Kabbalah. And the topic that we're talking about right now, specifically, and that's going to be the larger topic which is going to uh, be talked about throughout this chapter, is the concept of yesh mi'ayin, the idea of creation of something from nothing. And more specifically, as contrasted to another way or another manner wherein one thing can emerge from another, which is what we call ilav alu, cause and effect. In yesh mi'ayin, so there's two ideas in yesh mi'ayin. There's the yesh element and there's the ayin element. But both of them are very uh, informative. Yesh means it's something. It's something meaning it uh, that which that which is created considers itself to be a mitzias, considers it has ego, it has identity. It doesn't view itself as an offshoot of its um, its creator. Rather, it looks at itself as something which is um, mitzias for itself. And where does it come from? Me'ayin. It doesn't has no comprehension of its source because there's a quantum leap between the creator and the creation. And these two things, although the two separate things, are obviously related and connected one to another. Why is it that the yesh feels itself to be a yesh? Because of that quantum leap. If the yesh were to have an understanding of its creator, if the creation were to have an understanding of its creator, then it wouldn't consider itself to be anything. It would realize it's simply a, an offshoot of something higher than it. It wouldn't consider itself to be a gansa chashu and mitzias. Or even a metzias at all. It would realize it's simply, a, again, something which is... Um, a, by, a, a product of something higher than it. <clears throat> and ilav ol and cause and effect. So both of those conditions don't exist. And starting with the second one, the, the effect relates to, understands, and is close to the cause. There's a relationship between the two. You look at the effect and you right away understand the cause, <clears throat> which is why it's not a yesh, which is why it's called a ol. It's called an effect. It's not called a mitzias because it doesn't really consider itself to be a mitzias because it understands that all it is, is uh, again, is an offshoot of the, its, um, its source. What's an example of the cause and effect? I missed the last few shir. Right. So an example of cause and effect would be Seichel and Midas. Seichel is the cause, and Midas are the effect. Machshava or Dibur. Machshava is the and if you cause, can, and if Dibur you can, is the effect. Um, um, since you just gave an example, if you can spell out how is that cause and effect, the, and, and then it, and in contrast to the yesh and that the yesh feels that it has a, a metzias, um by the by the um, dibur and Misa, how is that uh, that the one does uh, that it's um, it doesn't speech doesn't it is obviously and very clearly a direct extension of a person's thought even though. That you look at a person sometimes and you're like, oh, why did he say that? He must have not been thinking. But <laughs> that doesn't happen. If there is no thought, there is no speech. And therefore. But the speech doesn't look at it that it has a, ye- a yeshus, that it has a, a matzias? That's what, you're, that's it, what it, you're saying. It views itself as an offshoot of the machshava. And then it's if you look at the speech, if, if you're speaking right now, you asked me a question. Is it reasonable for me to now assume what you're thinking? Yeah, because yes. because your speech is not a mitzvah for itself. It comes directly. It's an offshoot of your machshava. When you look at a, so I, I could uh, I, I I see what you're speaking, and I have um, a very good idea of what you're thinking. If I see that you have a strong feeling about something, then I have a very good idea about what your mind says about that, what your perception is in that area, because one is an offshoot of the other. But when I look at the table, do I have an understanding of Hashem? It's so removed. It's, it's yesh mi'ayin, exactly. There is that quantum leap. And that's why the table also views itself as a mitzvah, because it has no understanding, it has no comprehension. There is that remove, there's that divide. Now, now we're also, come up, uh, as Basu had done, we also come under uh, I, I, having a yesh, so that we have some sense of Hashem. But I, I guess it's... We, we sense that there is a Hashem, but we consider we ourselves far, to be a yesh. We are far away from what... Hashem's essence is... A guess. malach is also yesh mi'ayin. Even though a malach is holy, it experiences itself as a mitzias. There is that quantum leap, which is yesh mi'ayin. I don't want to talk about this okay. too much, because we've been there, for, and, yeah. and uh, also you don't really have much of an excuse, even though you're in Israel the past few weeks, because everything's online. So you mm-hmm. can always go and you can always catch yeah, up. Um, 
four in the morning. You got them today at four in the morning? No. I, it, no, I'm saying today it's time. online. No, actually, we're not being broadcast live anymore. Oh. There's a technical... Uh, all right. Technical, but, uh, but it's all online. You can okay. always... Uh, okay. Okay. So we said it is as follows. We said that in the world of Atsilos, the world of Atsilos <laughs> is not Yashmiayim. The world of Atsilos is Ilava Olu from Hashem, and the spheres of Atsilos also are Ilava Olu one from another. And that's because in Atsilos there is no Yash. Atsilos is a world which is Alukus. It doesn't, in the world of Atsilos, nothing, the Kalim, the Iris, and the Kalim, they do not experience themselves as identities, as a Metzias. They are directly extensions of Hashem. And that is the, the, the Iris of Atsilus and the Kalim of Atsilus. And if you want a better understanding of Iris and Kalim, you really have to go back and listen to the first class on this period, which was from two weeks ago. Where does, where does Yashmi Ayin begin? Yashmi Ayin begins in the world of Bria. And clue, your clue is the word Bria. What does Bria mean? Bria means a creation. Creation. Right? creation. Yeah. That means it's a Yash. There's something there. Something was created. As opposed to the word, the word Atsilus which means an emanation. Emanation is not something new. Emanation is something which is an outgrowth. Or an extension. An extension, right, of something previous. It came from something. Right, so that's what we learned. We said that... Um, now, he did, Al-Tarabit did mention that when we say that in the world of Bria, and obviously in the worlds beneath Bria, such as Yitzira and Asiya, when we say that there are creations, we're talking about the Kalim in those worlds, and we're also talking about the Ruach and the Nefesh in those worlds. The Neshama... The neshama in the worlds of Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya are also elokus. They're not yeshmiyayim. They come directly from the kalim of Malchus Datsilus, as we spoke last week, the Lamed kalim Malchus Datsilus. So, so far we have this distinction. We have the world of Asilus is elokus, and the worlds of Bia are yeshmiyayim, with the exception of the neshama with the And now we're going to continue. The is going to start further categorize things, some in the category of yeshmiyayim and some in the category of Elokus, which is Ilava Ovo. We are holding inside where it says, <coughs> on page Kof Lamid, V'chein Ba'atzilos, which is seven lines from the top of page Kof Lamid, and I just want to give the same warning or disclaimer that we said last week, which is that you're not going to understand every word that we are going to teach in this Perik. I am not going to understand every word that I'm going to teach in this Perik. And let's not get very stuck on the details, the larger ideas that will emerge will be understandable. So, for example, this idea of Yashmi Ayin versus Ilava Olu is something that we can relate to. Now, maybe not every single Kabbalistic term that Al-Tarab is going to use, and that's going to, as we continue, just keep that in mind. Our, our, our primary goal over here in this class, I say this is different than any other period where usually we try to, you know, very give clear understandings of every single term that's discussed. Over here, we're going to, in some areas, move a little quicker, and the main thing is going to be the larger idea, unless you guys really want to sit for the next two years and study this very chapter. No. And then I also have to spend two years studying the chapter before. <laughs> have you already, um, question? Have, um, uh, have you already brought out what is? I know that in Hasidus, the, the there's always a goal. What does it have to do with me? What does well, it have to do yes. with us? Has it already been brought out from no, this? Um, no, we mentioned as we started that the um, <laughs> the takeaway from this period is going to be a very deep understanding of Dira Betachtoinim and, and the preciousness and value of this physical world. But we're very far away from getting there. Okay. Okay, but that yes, there will be. We'll have a new understanding of. The value of our world, a new understanding, the value of a physical mitzvah that we do, and that yes, that will come, but at a later point in time. Okay, which, which chapter? Chapter twenty. No, the chapter of that you can get a better understanding on the value of this world. This, this, this. This chapter. This paragraph. Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, came yeah. to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says later on. He said. The chain Batzilus. Earlier, we said that Batzilus is a lakus. Lakus. However, interestingly, I'll still do this maybe first outside, then we'll do it inside. The world of Atsilus is called the Oilam. It's called Oilam HaAtsilus. Now, higher than Atsilus, we don't talk about Oilamas. We don't talk about worlds. For example, Kesar, we don't call it Oilam HaKesar. And other Madrigas that are higher than Atsilus, levels that are higher than Atsilus, we don't talk about it being a world. And why is that? Because the word world connotes the idea of Taka, a creation. But how can we say... Why, how yeah, can we say, or why that. would we say that um, that Atsilus is a world if we're saying that it's a lukus? So Al-Tarab is going to tell us that in Atsilus, we've spoken up until this point about the idea of the Oiris and the Kalim of the Spheris. There's a third element 
and we'll find out, find out soon also a fourth element. There's a third element in Atsilos, and that is what we call the Hechalos. There's the, in every world, there's the Hechalos, which means the chambers, the spiritual chambers. So there's the, there's the spheres, and the spheres are comprised of Oiris of, of and Kalim. And then there's the Hechalos, which are the chambers. Um, to put it in different words, the Oiris, the spheres of every, of every world are the battery of the world. That's the energy of the world. And then there's the world itself. The world itself is the Hechalos. Now, that is going to tell us the Hechalos of the world also are Yesh. So in a, and that's why Atsilos is called Oilam Atsilos, because in Atsilos also there's Yesh, but not the, not the spheres. The Oiris and Kalim of Atsilos are absolute other Yeah. Let's yeah. do this inside. <clears throat> And also, similarly, in Atsilos, from the external part of the Kalim of the Ten Spheres of Atsilos, Shehena Lakus, they are Lakus, again, the, the Ten Spheres of Atsilos are Lakus, the Oiris, the Kalim. Nivru, but they create Hechalos, the Atsilos, the Hechalos, the Chambers of Atsilos, Shemeslabish Bahen, Bechinas Haigulim, the Yud Spheres, and the Igulim of the Ten Spheres are within them. Very, very quick explanation what that means. Igulim is a, a term we encountered two weeks ago. I already uh, told you about it. Igulim means circles. And ego, whenever you see the word Igulim in Kabbalah, we're always talking about something which is infinite, just like a circle is infinite. One example we have in this world, one example we have in this world of infinity is a circle, right? There's no, no beginning, no end. It has no beginning, it has no end. It has no top, it has no bottom. As opposed to a line, which is what we contrast the two is a kav, right? The line. The line of light, a line has a beginning, it has an end, it has an up, it has a down. As opposed to a circle, it doesn't have any of those features. So it represents them, it represents infinity. So within the Hichalus of Atsilus, that's where the Igulim, the infinite element of the ten spheres reside, which is kind of almost like a, you know, that's kind of strange. We're saying that the Hichalus of Atsilus are Yesh. So why why are they privy to this very high level of Oyer, which is Igulim? And actually the answer is, that as we say, as we say, in nigla ha baha talia, that this is a, the, the one, one is a contingent upon the other. When there is a light which is a finite light, which is a light which it can relate to, then then that's ilav ol. That's not yesh miayin. It's specifically because of the quantum leap, because there's the igulim in there. That's why it can be a yesh, because it's so beyond it, it's so transcendent, it doesn't feel that light. But let's move on. So what did we learn up until now? That in Atsilus also there's an element of Yesh, and that is the Hechalis. Vegam and also Gufes HaMalachim the Atsilus, the bodies of the Malachim in Atsilus. Shehein Bechin is Yesh, they are also Yesh. So here, we're, here we find out that Malachim have a body and a soul also. Now that sounds strange, because Malachim aren't physical. So what does it mean that Malachim have a body and a soul? But that's fine. Spirit. Well, soul isn't physical. Right. But well, how, do they, how do they have a body? Spiritual. Yeah. So this, it's a spiritual body. Without getting into that too much, it's a spiritual body. And the Alter Rebbe here now is saying that in the world of Atsilus also there are Malachim, which is a little of a surprise. Because usually when we talk about Malachim, we say Malachim are not in the world of Atsilus. Malachim are in the worlds of Bria and Yitzira. Thank you. However, in some places in Kabbalah, it talks about a very, very special, incredibly holy class of Malachim. And these are the Malachim in the world of Atsilos. And for this, the Alter Rebbe quotes a Pasuk in Iyev, Kamesh Kosov, as the Pasuk says, Uvi Malachav Yasim Tahala. Anyone recognize these words? No? The, the, the Pasuk is, Hein Ba'avadav Loyamin. The Hashem, there, you know, in Eve over there, very um, talking how lowly the person is and how little we understand. So the pasuk says, "Hein ba'avad of leyamin." Hashem, even in his own, his own his own servants, he doesn't trust them. Uvi malachav, and in his malachim, in his angels, yosim tohala. Different mafarshim have different understandings of what the word tohala is. But bottom line, some of them explain tohala. It, it's obviously he's he's, he's um, saying something derogatory about the malachim. 
And according to some of the Tahala Malashan In other words, he makes Tahala. fun of them. Tahala. Tahala. Yeah, it's a word I don't know if you find it anywhere else in Tanakh. Tahala. Nothing like the word Tahila, which is a very good word. Which is a praise, right. Now, so Tahala Malashan Hoilulus. Hoilulus means. Some of the say that it means Malashan Tahala, which means that, again, he makes fun of them. Others say Tahala is the Lashan of light. Behilu means light. And which means. That malacha v'yosim tala, which means that he doesn't find he, either he doesn't find any light in his malacha, because hein bavad of loy yamen he doesn't trust his servants umalacha and his malachim the loy also extends he doesn't find light over there, or it means he shines a light on them to expose their uh, their defects. But what's interesting is that the pasuk doesn't say the word ubi malachim and in angels, rather the pasuk uses the word ubi malacha his malachim. Which that denotes a certain special class of malachim. These are Hashem's malachim. These are the malachim in the world of Atzilus. The, wor- the malachim in the world of Bria and Yitzirah, they are not malachav. They are not Hashem's malachim. They are malachim. Malachav is the malachim of Atzilus. But even the malachim of Atzilus, Hashem is so great that even in them also, he pokes fun at them. Obviously, Hashem has good midas. He doesn't poke fun at them, but it means that he's not impressed by them. Uh, why did I ask if anyone recognizes this pasuk? Not because I, f- I thought that anyone here is a uh, Bucky and Eve, but actually these words appear in the liturgy. I don't remember either Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur. I think Yom Kippur we say this. We say we say we, uh, we say this pasuk in one of the piyutim. So, so the Rebbe is going to say we have over here the malachim. So the malachim and Atzilus are comprised, as we mentioned, of a guf and a neshama. The gufim of the neshama and Atzilus are also yesh. Whereas the neshamis of the malachim and atzilus, as we'll find out, are elokus, are elokus. Yeah. Let's do this inside. She'einam bebechinas bitul legamri. The the bodies of the malachim are not completely bottled. Ke alu legabi ilase like a effect to its cause. So the malachim are not ilav alu. There, Yashmiai. Okay. So by the way, if I had a whiteboard behind me, this would be a great opportunity to make a chart because we have really the is throwing things into different classes. So, for, so you have one side of, imagine, so you can imagine this chart, on one side you have a lukus, on the other side you have yashmiayin. So on the lukus side, what do we have so far? We have the kalim and oiris of Atsilus, the neshamis of the malachim of Atsilus, and also the neshama of Bia, of Bia we looked at that last week. On the side of Nivroim, what do we have so far? We have the hechalos of Atsilus. The gufim of the neshamis of Atzilus, and in 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 Bia, the kalim of Bia, and also the nefesh and ruach of Bia. Those are all, those are all um, yashmiyim. You mean heichel of Atzilus? Sorry, what's heichel of this? The heichalos of Atzilus. We discussed that before you walked in. The heichalos of Atzilus that the, is the oilam of Atzilus. Yeah, it's a, if you if you look in the lines before we without time to talk about them. Okay. Ah, however, so he said, we said before that the gufim of the neshamas come from our yashmiyai. Ah, neshamas hamalachim. However, the neshamas of the malachim sheyatsu mizivu nishanishikin that they emerge from the unity of nishikin, which is kisses, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. V'chein and the same thing is nishmei saadam the neshama of ayid sheyatsu mizivu zocher v'nekeva datzilos. They emerge from the unity of male and female of atzilos. Before the neshamas come down to Bri Yitzir and Asiya, Einan Bechlal Yesh V'davar Nifra with the Atzmai, they are not Yesh, Elohim Me'ein Bechinus Elokus, they are Elokus. We have a lot to unpack over here. Let's start from the beginning. So we know, anyone who opened, ever opened up a Sefer of pure Kabbalah, you know that uh, a lot of the Sfarim, you might want to say most of the Sfarim, deal with the different Yehudim, the different unities, because just like here in this world, every Everything that's created comes from a yichud, a yichud zachar and a keva, whether that's in the human or in, in the human form or even in the animal form, and I believe even in in the, in tzemech, I believe also there's a male and female element that uh, for a plant to grow. I'm not a I'm not a botanist, but I believe that's the case. But the same thing is in with salyenu because we're here a reflection of the higher worlds, and the higher worlds also everything comes about from a yichud. In atzilus, there are two levels of yichud. There's a yichud neshikin, which is the yichud of kisses, the yichud of unity of kisses, and then there's yichud zachar and akeva, which is the unity of male and female, which is a physical unity. Mar- marital intimacy. Now, obviously, everything over there is in a spiritual form, but just like over here in our world, 
So we have two different types of unity. One unity is when two people close to each other, in the case of uh, a Zohro and a Keva, the way the um, Shlomo Mel talks about it in Shir Hashirim, there's a Yichud Nashikin, there's kissing. And then there is the physical unity of marital, uh, marital intercourse. Which one is a higher form of unity? The Yichud, the kissing, or the physical unity between, between the male and female? Physical. Physical is a higher one. No, Why are you saying that? Spiritual is higher. I don't know how to evaluate it. I don't know what the gauge is. Okay, physical inti- physical intimacy. It's Animals true, yeah. have that also. That's not uh, that could be a very low grub. Yeah, and it's a low. You might want to say a lowly, crass act. Whereas the idea of kissing and the way he talks about it in the Hasidus and Kabbalah, kissing also involves the the breath, which is a more spiritual element, the mingling of the breath, and. Whereas you might want to say uh, marital intimacy or physical intimacy can be an expression of just like primal, uh, primal um, lust. A spiritual, a spirit, a kissing represents a sort of a more emotional closeness, a spiritual closeness. It's, it's a higher level. So the Rebbe is going to tell us, tell us over here, based on Kabbalah, the neshamis of the malachim of Atzilus, they come from the, this higher form of unity, which is why malachim are higher than, than human beings. They come from the yichud nishikim, or the is that, as he says over here, um, the zivug nishikin, which is a higher spiritual union in Atsilus, which produces the neshamas, the souls of the malachim, whereas neshamas are on a lower level, they produce, um, they, are, they come from the zivug zachar or nekevo, which is a lower physical type of union in Atsilus. Now, obviously, everything is relative because in Atsilus there is no physical, but just like we use our own experience as a mirror to have somewhat of an understanding of above, just like by us, there are two levels of unity. One is the spiritual unity, which is represented by kissing, and then there's the physical unity of the male and the female. And they, so the same thing is also above in Atsilus, you have the same thing. The malachim, the neshamas of the malachim, they come from the kissing, and um, the neshamas of neshamas, or or neshamas of people come from the yichud zacher and akeva. Now, Sheldon, when you said before that physical intimacy is higher, is there re- yet any any reason why you said that? Well, it's more intimate between the two between the two people. That's uh, that's what I meant. Okay, I don't know. I'm not sure that it's more intimate on a, on, on, on a, on a spiritual emotional level, but there's definitely an advantage in it. What is the advantage in physical intimacy? It reproduces. It produces children. And when, a, and when a child is born, the child is of the essence of the parents. The idea of, of reproduction in kind is only through Yichud Zachar Nekeva. Kissing doesn't create children. Doesn't create children. Because kissing represents spiritual unity. And spiritual unity is nice, but in order to create a child, you need physical unity. Which is interesting. Which is why the Neshamas Malachim might be higher than the Shamas because they come from the Yichud Neshikin. They come from this higher level of Yichud. Yeah. But the Neshama of Ayid is a Chelek Alagami Mal Mamesh. It's a piece of Hashem because we come, we are literally from the Yichud Zachar and the Keva above. The Malachim are not. They don't come from. They're not. So they're higher. But we are essentially connected. To use an example, let's say you have a person, a big, a big, a big Rashi Shiva, and he has. <coughs> A star Talmud, a Talmud Muvak. And he has a very deep spiritual connection to him. And then the Rosh Yeshiva has a son, who is a low IQ, learning disabled, doesn't know how to learn. The Rosh Yeshiva can't even speak to him intelligibly in the same language. Who has a stronger connection? Would you say the stronger, there's a strong connection between the Rosh Yeshiva and the student, or the Rosh Yeshiva and the son? Son. The son. Even though spiritually speaking, you might say, and you might say spiritually, blood is what? Than water. <coughs> the blood connection is is. Bra as the Gemara says, the son mm-hmm. is an extension. Is literally an extension of the 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 son is the foot of the father. And the same thing is also Malachim might be higher. Malachim might be like the this big star student of Hashem, but we're. Where is the chilek of the kamimal? That's neshamas, because we come from the yichud of Zohar and Akeva, not the yichud of the shikim. But the common denominator between both the neshamas of Malachim and the nesh- and neshamas Yisrael is that both of them are elokus. 
Both of them are Ilkus, not Yesh Miyayim. Okay, so again, when we have this chart, which you can visualize, that on one side we have, again, in the Ilkus column, so we discussed before a lot about the about the Yesh Miyayim column. In the Yesh Miyayim column, you have the worlds of Biyad, the Kalim, and the, and the Oiris, and the Hechalus of Atsilos go in the Yesh Miyayim column. The Gufim, the bodies of the Malachim of Atsilos go in the Yesh Miyayim column. But in the Lakus column, we have so far we have the Oiris and Kalim of the world of Atsilos, and also the Neshamas of the Malachim and Neshamas Yisrael, their Lakus. So let's do, let's do again from the Chain Nish, the Chain Nishmay Sa'adam. Chain also Nishmay Sa'adam, the Neshamas of the human being. Sheyatsu Mizunda Atsilos, that emerge from Zun of Atsilos, Koidem Sheyardu Libiya, before they come down to Biya, Eman Bechal Yesh Vedavar Nifar Bifniyas, may they are not. Um, they are not a uh, 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 yes, right? Elohim me'ain bechinus alakus. They are alakus. We're similar to alakus. Bitzim tzum atzum, although in a very, very contracted form. Ukein hakelim the yitzvidus datzilus. They're similar in a way to the kelim of the ten yitzvidus of atzilus. Shehein bebechinus gvul. The kelim also are limited. Aidei bitzim tzum oirei insof. And they come about through the tzimtzum of the infinite light of Hashem, Hu HaKav, which is the Kav, <coughs> the line of light which we discussed two weeks ago. HaMalubish Benaran Shalahem, which is pre- present in the in Nefesh Ruach Neshama of the Kalim of Atzilus. Ukamay Tzimtzum HaRishan Li Yitzchalol V'cholo, and it's a tremendous contraction, even similar to the Tzimtzum HaRishan, the original Tzimtzum, which is in a way of removal of the light as we discussed. So we have, what is he saying over here? That the Neshamas, uh, the Neshamas of Yidim, as they are in the world of Atsilos Aralukos. However, as we know, the Neshamas of the average Yid don't come down. As they enter the body, they are not a Neshama of Atsilos. Rather, they make their way down through the worlds of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. So, therefore, the Neshama which we have inside us is not Alukos. It's already Yesh. Our Neshama is Yesh. But the source of the Neshama, as it is in the world of Atsilos, is. Is a lukus. The neshama as it originates in Atsilus is a lukus. Is that a yechida? Yeah, we, yeah, and we're going to talk about this more as we move on. Uh-huh. We're going to talk is about this. Contraction, the contraction, the symptoms is the yesh part. Sorry? Is that the cause and effect? Is the contraction the symptom? The contraction, he's saying, even, that's, that's, even, that's, that's the neshama, the cause. even the neshama as it is in Atsilus, which is a lukus, but it's also a very limited form of, 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 of a lukus. Through the because of the tzimtzum, because of the contractions. Even in even, even in atzilus. Even in atzilus. Then the neshama comes down, and then it becomes a yesh. Now, but by ver- well, what changes? Even the I, I don't understand. If you have a tzimtzum, we'll have what, a better what understanding as we, as we continue. Yeah, what did it change between from when they were by traveling from from atzilus to uh, bria? What changed? Just. It became a yesh. How did it, what do you mean? What, what was the change? Here? Right. Well, well, he says the contraction is not. Ruben. One second. Sorry. The contraction is not yeshus. You Ruben. just told me that. Ruben. What does yesh mean? Something that has an independent entity to itself. So as the neshama enters the world of bria, suddenly it considers itself to be something. It gains yeshus. It gains a sense of identity, which in Atzilus it doesn't have. In Atzilus it's alakus. So he says, but it's, but he says it's not, it's not something that's, that is separated from, from. Uh, in Atzilus. But it becomes separated when it goes down to, to Bria? It gains, it doesn't really become separated, it gains a sense of separation. Nothing is really separated from Hashem. It's all about the self-perception. So it has its own independent perception. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a little clearer understanding as we move along. So we have, the, by, by us, our Neshama, and the Neshama comes down, and then, um, However, there are certain neshamas taken, which even as the certain very holy neshamas, which I'm next week, we're celebrating the, the yard site <laughs> of, of, of the of Shimon Bar Yechai, there's no there's certain holy high, high neshamas, that as they are down over here in this world, they're neshamas of Atzimus. Now, you can ask, one second. Yeah, it's not the government you're talking about. Uh, not yet, yeah, and in Sadiq and Gamur, maybe not yet. We're talking about the obvious, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. Meshur, we're talking about the yeah, great yeah. Neshamas. Yeah. The Neshamas, not Silas. Now you can ask, what does that mean? If they're here in this world, how can it be Neshama of Silas? They're here, they're not not Silas. No, how would you answer that question? Yeah. 
<laughs> they have the influence of, of a tzilus. The answer no. is, the answer is, mm -hmm. I may say, that a tzilus isn't a place. What? It's not as if it's, it's not a place. Mind. It's a state of mind. It's a state, a state of spirituality, a state of bittel. Yeah. So it's, it's a high, right? So you can be here in this world. But and being at Silos, at Silos is not a space. At Silos is here, there, everywhere. There's always, it's not like you, you know, you go to NASA and you can take a rocket, a space shuttle, and and get to Silos, yeah. right? It's all here. We talk about it. What? It's all here. It's yeah. It's a spiritual yeah. level. So we have Moshe I Rabbeinu mean, was in the Shama of Atzilus, and he's busy standing and talking to Pare. So you have here in the same room, you have the world of Atzilus, and you have uh, and you have Gimel Klipas Hatmeis on the lowest form. Because this is about spiritual states. So you have certain neshamas that as they come down here, they don't change form. They remain on neshama datsilas. Which means that the neshama in the guf is a lukus, has no identity. Is a lukus. They don't have the tzimtzum. No, no. So, so the, the mashal that's brought down for this in chassidus is you have, the you have the head, and that's where the seichel is. And you have a hand. Now we know your hand doesn't think. Mm -hmm. However, there's energy that comes from your head to your hand. And what, what is that energy? That energy gives your hand the ability to, uh, to, to move. move. To the, yeah. Motion. But what happens when you're busy writing Chidush Yeter? So the Seichel is going through your hand. But are you going to say now that the Seichel changed and now it's a hand Seichel? No. no. It's the same seichel on the head, which is coming through the handle. And I this, this is called, it's bederech maifer. What? Bederech maifer. Maifer means it passes through. The seichel, it, yeah, it goes to the hand, but it didn't, wasn't impacted by the hand. It passed through. Certain neshamas, they pass through the worlds of Bri, Yitzir, and Asiya, it totally unimpacted. They come down here into the guf, and the neshama is alukos. Now, let's do this inside. The Rebbe says in the parentheses, Af gam la'achar sheyardu Hanaranda Atsilus, even after the Nefesh Ruach and Neshama of, of Atsilus, Lo Elam Haza comes down to this world, the Tzadikim Harishonim to the early Tzadikim, Efsher, Al Rebbe says it's possible, which is an interesting word Al Rebbe uses, it's possible, Shalai Nishtana Mohusam, that their, 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 their substance did not change. Liyeis Dovar Nifred Melokus, that they should become something separate from Melokus, they remain Melokus. And therefore, how you mistalke such neshamas, they would they would leave the body. When there was a desire to sin, b'terem yachtu before they would sin. The example of part of this is the is Chanoich. Chanoich was one of the ten generations between Adam and Noach. Tragically, he passed away at a young age. He was three hundred something when he passed away, which was um, as young. When everyone else was living 900 years. So, uh, <laughs> Na Na Nabach, he passed away <laughs> in the prime of his life. Niktach with the yam, he mm -hmm. passed away at the age of three, I remember, 360 something, 365, uh, somewhere around there. And the Pasuk uses an interesting uh, uh, words about it, right? He walked with Hashem. He's no longer here. Because Hashem mm -hmm. took him. So, what does that mean? So, in, the, in Kabbalah, it's funny, the Tikkun Yisrael talks about this and it says, that there are certain neshamas that because the neshama remains a lukus, so if they have a desire to do an aver, I guess how they have a desire to do an aver if they have a neshama it's a lukus. Uh, and I have to also remember that Hanoich lived in a very corrupt time. What? He lived in a very very corrupt time. Apparently, and again I can't say I understand the, fully the dynamics of this. Um, that. Even someone with a neshama of a, a neshama of atzilus mitzad the guf because the body there could be sometime as a temptation to do an avera, but the moment that happens, the neshama leaves. Is that he, was he before the, the nefilim or after the nefilim? Uh, um, uh, probably a little before. A little before, because it was a very Seen. corrupt time. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, yes, it was a very corrupt time. Now, so but what happens is. That because the neshama is absolute alakus and has no yeshus, the moment that the neshama, that there's the body has a desire to do an avera, the neshama is bye bye. I can't, this is not something not I me. can. Uh, what? It's not, it's not for me. He gives up and he just runs away. It, it can't. It simply cannot. It cannot take it. Now the rest of us, even though we have a neshama, even though our neshama is holy, let's be let's be clear. That every one of us has a neshama that's holy, but it's a yesh. It's a holy which is a yesh. So therefore. The, the, the fact is, this might surprise some of you, but there are actually people who do Averis. And the Neshama doesn't, uh, 
the neshama doesn't run away. And that's why, because the neshama at the end of the day came down through the chain of worlds, and it becomes a yesh to a certain extent, and therefore it can tolerate an avera. Although it doesn't like it, it's not happy about it, but it, as opposed to the neshama, which is completely yobakus. Now, here's what's important to understand. So we're saying that there are great neshamas who have a neshama, the great, great tzaddikim have a neshama of atzilus. And what's our neshama? So we say our neshama, right? The neshama of, of uh, Asiya, right? The lowest level. <sighs> My neshama is not from Atzilus. So the answer is no. Your neshama is also from Atzilus. <laughs> what does that mean? We're imagining it's either here or there. And it's not. It's both. By way of example. You have Machshava and Dibur and Maisa, which is brought down on Atzilus many times, right? So, And one leads to another. So you can have one person who's thinking. That's it. Highly spiritual person, he sits and thinks. Another person has dibur, meaning that he brings down. Not only does he think, but it, now so, and suddenly, when a person speaks, what's happening is is that the the ideas are definitely taking on a more limited and practical and physical form than when it's only a machshava. Then you have a person number three that not only does a person do machshava, but he also has dibur and also maisa. He acts upon his ideal. So suddenly, you realize what happened when a person acts upon it. The yirida. <laughs> from a spiritual thought to a physical act. Let me ask you a question. The person who acted upon it, does he also have machshava? Sure. Or would you say, oh no, he departed machshava, he departed dibur, and now there's only maisa. No. Impossible. No. The neshama, we're saying, the great tzaddikim, who the neshama of Atsilos means they never left that state of Atsilos. They never stayed that. Even as, even as the neshama comes down here, it never left that spiritual state. By the rest of us, the neshama departed that state, and and the neshama that's in, in our body is that lower level of the you know from uh, through bria, but at its core our neshama is still in atzilus, just like at the core the machshava still exists. The core of our neshama even now is in a state of bittul ta'alukus completely. Follow what I'm saying? So, which is why we have a yi down here in this world. With a lowly neshama, okay, by the way, whenever you use the word lowly neshama, I have to qualify that because everything obviously is relative. And neshama, by definition, is, is, is highly, not lowly. But um, you have a yid with a lowly neshama, and that yid gives up his life, al Kiddush Hashem. Now think about that for a second, what that means. A yesh cannot give up his life, al Kiddush Hashem. Impossible. Mesir nafesh is an impossibility for a yesh. Because by definition, a yesh wants to exist. The idea of Giving up one's life for Hashem, not for no gain, for no purpose, for no selfish or self-centered reason whatsoever is impossible. How is it that a yid is able to give up his life? And the answer is because when it comes to the soyin al kiddush Hashem, what is nesgala in the yid? The source of his neshama, which is called yichida. So you, you ask by yichida. You ask, the yichida. And the yichida is an atzilus. Even now, my yichida is an atzilus. What do you mean it's an atzilus? Not up there. The only thing is that on the average day, my body is not operating on that level of neshama. My body is operating on a lower level of neshama, which is a yesh, which is why sometimes a person can do averis. But the understanding is the difference between me and a big tzaddik is that by me, the neshama then extended further and further. Although all those levels still exist within me. Whereas by the tzaddik, the neshama, the conscious neshama, what he's thinking and breathing and feeling on a daily basis is atzilus. Can we say that the, uh, the person, the tzaddik who has a tzilus at all times, is, always has the Pasuk Savita Shem Negdi Samad, that's a constant in front of him. It's not that it comes and goes like the rest of us. You're shortchanging. You're shortchanging the tzaddik by saying that. Shivisi Hashem Negdi Samad means there's me and I have Hashem in front of me. <coughs> when, you, when the person, the neshama is Elokus, the notion that Hashem is in front of me is almost like a... It's a, a separated. He that, doesn't that, view that, himself as a mitzias bechol. So it's a total bittel. It's a total bittel, yeah. More than shavit Hashem. Yeah, shavit uh, is there's, there's a negdi, there's me, and I have Hashem in front of me. By the tzaddik, there's no me. It, it's a, it's the, the tzaddik, the neshama of atzilos, is a merkava talakus, a complete expression of Hashem. It has it feels no identity, no ego whatsoever. And it's just in the Zohar that we have these. Lofty ideas. I'm not aware of a pasuk that brings out the idea of total bittel. Reb Shimon Bar Yechai said, "You talking about the Zayir?" Reb Shimon Bar Yechai said, "Ano simona ba'alma." What does that mean? I'm a simon. That's all I am. Is a simon. What's that supposed to mean? What is this? You never learned the Elam Matias. 
what is a simon? Simon is a, a, a sign. A sign. A sign. A what is a sign? A sign means a sign indicates something else, right? Whenever there's a sign, a sign is an indication of something else. He says, I'm a sign. I'm an indication of Hashem. That's all I am. I'm like a sign for Hashem. I don't have my own mitzvahs. I'm a sign. I'm a simon. That's all I am. That's what he said about himself. Simon means it's a sign for something good. His essence was that he was a simon, which is a fascinating, uh, you think, of the Hagdara definition. That's what he says in the Zayar. When it, when it says that uh, when a person sins, a ruach shtus enters, enters into him. So that seems to indicate that the norm is for him to do, you know, the proper thing. Because the Hashem is holy. Right. Even if it's a yesh, it's a holy yesh. It's important to understand. When we're saying a yesh doesn't mean something bad. Contrasting yesh to alakus means yes identity or no identity. The neshama, the neshama is holy. And it wants to serve Hashem. Even the neshama of the lowest yid. But it's still a tzimetzias. Tzimetzias. Whereas the neshama of these great tzaddikim were not a mitzias. It's not that they were, they were holy. Every neshama is holy. These were elokus. Elokus and holiness are not synonymous. Elokus is holy, but not all holiness is elokus. A malach is holy, but a, a malach is not elokus. We mentioned that the neshamas of the malachim and atzilus are elokus, but the average malach in Bria Yitzira is, is a nivras, is a yesh, a holy yesh. So what creates that identity? Why? One, one neshama has no identity and this has... What creates that uh, contrast? It has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. This is... Uh, it's part of the master plan of creation. Just, there are different types of neshamas. Different types of... And the Abish, there's some... What do we say? Um, no? We have in the first period of Tanya. What's the word about the uses over there? It says, Ra HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'Sadikim Shehem Muwatim Hashem saw that there were very few tzaddikim. So Ahmad v'shlosslan v'cholder v'adir. So he went and he put a few in every generation. That's not, in other words, there's a limited amount of these incredible neshamas, and Hashem puts a few in every generation. And for the for the rest of us, we can work from today to tomorrow to become a lakus. You realize you can't become a lakus by definition. You can be, you can be a yesh. So you can be an unholy yesh. You can become more refined. You can become holier. But you're still trapped in your yeshness. Can't overcome yeah, that. Because you overcome... your neshama is, that's is you, trapped in the goof. Yeah. So and the goof is the concealment of that neshama. But, 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 but I'm, I'm saying deeper than that. Even even the, if the neshama is not trapped in the goof, the neshama that enters the goof already is a neshama which is a yesh. As I mentioned, a neshama dasiya, a neshama. And once you're a yesh, you're trapped in that yeshness. The, 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 the concept of I exist, you can never get rid of the I. And I and it unless... You have a neshama which doesn't have the eye in the first place. And, for, and from what you said a few moments ago, Masir Snefesh is a one time thing. You can't be Moser Nefesh exactly. um, and have a Tchias and Mesim every day. It's not Shayach. Right. So the Alter Abin Tanya and the earlier Prakham of Tanya in chapters um, um, 18 through 25, Prakham Yudchas the Chafei, the Alter Abin talks about how, the, how important it is for us to keep in mind this idea that we would give up our, 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 our neshama al Kiddush Hashem. It's important to understand that at our core, we are a locus. Even if I can't act upon it every single moment because I'm not living in that reality every moment, that's an important thing always to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, that part of my neshama only, f- you know, flares up and comes up begidly only when there's an Nesoyin al Hashem, yes. We have ever talked extensively in Prakim Yud Ches Okay. So where's the free will if he has if if he has no yeshus? So we say, it's not shaykh to do it. If he, he has total is battle, so how could he have free will to do an event to begin with? And what's his purpose being down here to begin with? Let's see that alone for now. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, These are great questions, but they're not they're not also they're not so relevant. Uh, unless for you it is relevant. In which case I could try to hook you up with someone who can give you answers because uh and I could I could say a few in the other, but it's not it's not the again we're busy here categorizing. That's right now what Alter is doing is put, putting things in columns: the Yesh column versus the Lakus column. So the in the in the Yesh column so far again what, what a recap what do we have in the Yesh column? 
the yesh column we have bia, right? The kelim and eiros of bia. Yeah. And we have the hechalos of atzibos. We have the gufes of the neshamis of atzibos. And the lukus category we have the eiros and kelim of atzibos, the neshama of bia. And oh, also on the yesh side we have the. Did I mention the hechalos of atzibos? Did I put that on the yesh side, right? The hechalos. Yes. And then the and the lukus side we have. <coughs> Again, the Caleb and Eiris of Asilos, the Neshama of Bia, and the Neshamas of the Malachim of Asilos, and Neshamas Yisrael. Those are all the Lukus. And now the Alter Rebbe is going to throw some Kabbalah, more some Kabbalah to us, inside <laughs> the card of Leimar, <laughs> which is around seven lines in the bottom of the page, eight, eight lines in the bottom of the page, the card of Leimar. It's plausible to say, you notice the Alter Rebbe is using tentative language over here. So in the Idra of the Zoyar, the Idra Rabba, the Idra Rabba, the Idra Rabba, it's a part of the Zoyar, which I think believe off the which the Rajbi, I believe said on the day he passed away, I'm not going So the Idra Rabba says over there that there's a Madrega called the Gulgalta, the skull of Arech Anpin and Zeir Anpin, which we're not going to explain these terms, <laughs> but uh, suffice it to say that this is in Kesser, which is higher than Atzilus. So it says of the Zoyar that within this uh, in this skull there are thousands and tens of thousands of worlds, which is something which is difficult to digest. The notion of having worlds which are even higher than Atzilus, which again a world. Connotes something which is uh, not which is not which is yesh. Yeah. Yeah. So says no. It would seem that einon almin mamish. We're not talking really about worlds. This is not similar to the hechalos of atzilus. Who beginis yesh, which as we mentioned that the hechalos of atzilus are yesh. Ella rather kein neshamas amalachim. It's more similar to the neshamas of the malachim sheyatsu mezivuk haneshikin, which they emerge. From the zivuk of neshikin v'nikru almond, they're only called almond worlds. Legabi bechinus hagogalta v'dikna, relative to the actual skull or the beard. Okay, <laughs> there's two levels in keser. So again, this is highly kabbalistic. What the Alter is saying is follows, and this is in, when you learn chesidus. One of the more frequent lines that you'll hear is sevensach vumeret, which in Yiddish which means it depends what you're talking about. Depends where. So, for example, if I tell you I went to the mikvah this morning and the mikvah was boiling. Okay, everyone's fine with that. Statement. Sure. Now, what is the definition of boiling? That's relative. The <laughs> <laughs> definition of boiling is 212 degrees. I would oh. take, if I would take a cup of water from that mikvah, which probably is not, not a smart idea, but if I were to do that and put in some coffee, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't really enjoy that coffee too much. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> not, not because of the taste, also because of the temperature, right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, right. But that makes sense in the context of a mikvah when I say it's boiling I don't mean 212 I think 112 is also very very boiling for a mikvah um, but when I'm talking about when I'm following instructions in cooking and it says that uh, take boiling water and if I That's take water which is 112 it's not going to do right so everything everything is relative it depends where you're talking about if, I, if I'm teaching if I'm a math teacher and teaching first grade and I say oh I have this kid is an absolute math genius Okay, so oh great, so let's put that kid in uh, in, in Harvard and put him in a in a math class. Calculus, right? No, the kid won't be any big. So events relative to this to, to, to the kindergarten, the kid's a math genius. Relative to uh, to a uh, someone who's in a math class in a, in a in a prestigious university or even an unprestigious university or even an eighth grade, right? This kid knows nothing. Um, and the same thing is relative to the to, to the what we're I'm used to in a mikvah. This water is boiling. The same thing is also. And everyone said this. Oh, you have to say this, but it says this. Well, it really depends what you're talking about. So we're saying that in in Kesser, in Golgalta, which whatever whatever that means, there's almond, there's worlds. Wow, oh, what do you mean worlds? Worlds implies yeshes. Let me just relax. Relative to the Golgalta and the Dikna, relative to the higher levels in Kesser, which are known anthropomorphically as the skull and the beard. So these are considered almond. These are considered worlds, but they're worlds only relative to. They're not yesh in Kesher. There is no yesh. It's not like the world that the echalos of Atzilus, which are yesh, but rather everything is relative. So in the column of Alakus, you can also add now the tens of thousands of 
worlds that are in Golgotha, they're also in the column of Olokos. Ah, however, ain't an Olokos mamish. Here's an important point. That is that we are Mir Hashem. Next week we will talk at length. Not next week. Next class we're going to talk at length. What? Two weeks from now. Two weeks, right? We'll talk at length how the concept of Yeshmiayim, creating Yeshmiayim, is something which is only within the power of Elokus. One Yesh cannot create another Yesh. Impossible. You ever tried creating something? You can change something. You have to create. Right. We, can't, we can't create anything. We ill of all this cause and effect, but Yeshmiayim. It's only in the power of Elokus. So if we're saying that the Shamas of Atsilus are Elokus, does that mean that Chanoich can create Yashmiai? Was Chanoich able to create Yashmiai? He wasn't a god. Chanoich wasn't a tzaddik? No, he, he, was, he, god. Wasn't, he wasn't a god. But, but we just said his Neshama was a Neshama that Silos, which is Elokus. Or how about, how about Rishim and Baruchai? How about a Malach in the world of Atsilus, which is Elokus? Can it create Yashmiai? No, the Rebbe says no. Ah, however, what we said, what did we say? We said about the neshamas of the malachim, and also neshamas of of, of, of Eden. The ability to create yeshmiayin is not within their ability. because they already left and they departed from the kalim of the ten sfiras that Within them is the Kav of the Eir in Saif, and the light is similar to the source of light. You don't have to turn the page because we're not turning today. <laughs> we're stopping over here. What? The Manal made a goyim or something. That was Yashmiayin. What Yashmiayin? He took, he, took, uh, he took clay and he formed it. Into, and the Abishter blew on a Shama into it. Not Yashmiayin. Yashmiayin is the is the famous is the, the famous shumas the shumas what the Abishter gave the neshama. He dove into the Abishter. The Abishter gave the neshama. He can't create something. Person doesn't create anything. We can't do anything ourselves. We always need Hashem's help. Is what we're saying. Yeah, I, no, I'm not. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying oh. at the end of the day, you take a piece of silver and you want to transform it. You can do it into something else, or you can. Uh, but the idea of creating something literally out of nothing is oh. not within the ability of a human being. You have um, the famous joke about a group of scientists that got together and they said, you know what, uh, we don't need Hashem anymore. We figured out how to create. Hashem says, yeah, really, that's cool. Let me see that. They said, yeah, we can actually, we can create an animal. Said, what, uh, they start taking some uh, dirt. And Hashem says, ah, 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 use your own dirt. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what's he saying over here? He's saying like this. This goes back to something we spoke about two weeks ago. I mentioned... That after the Tzimtzum Harishan, after the original Tzimtzum, which as we spoke then, was in a way of Siluk. Hashem removed all the light. Because there was no room for a world. We spoke about it two weeks ago. Brings to mind the story of the Tzamach Tzadik. The Rebbe, the Rebbe says the story. There was once a Chassid who came to the Tzamach Tzadik, <coughs> and he complained. He says that in the Shul, where I daven in the base Medrash, everyone steps on me. The Tzamach Tzadik answered, he says, what do you expect? You spread yourself over the entire shoulder. Wherever someone steps, it's on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, they're every, yeah, of course, someone steps, it's on them. So this, Hashem had a, you know, I want to say, a similar issue. He wants to create the world. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Wherever he looks, he's there. Now, Hashem had to remove the light. That's the Tzimtzum HaRishen. And then, as we know, he drew in a, um, a, a line of light, which is called the Kav, which we're going to be talking about extensively as we continue this chapter. And that line of light, which be, which becomes steadily smaller as it goes along, as the, lo, the as the world's, it ends at Malchus Datsilus, including Malchus of Atzilus. After that, that's where the Kav ends. Any light that extends after that is what's called in Hasidus a Ha'ara de Ha'ara, which means it's a ray of a ray. So for example, try thinking of an example, where is it? You have the sun, and then maybe if the sun bounces off the sun it's not the, not a direct ray of the sun but you got to bounce uh, you know where, where the sun bounces off somewhere else or you can have something that's an extension like a, if something's connected to the source its energy source and then when it's disconnected it could still have it still has energy but it's not connected the actual kav ends up malchus that silos and afterwards there's the, this disconnect yes light continues but it's not directly connected to the top what does that mean practically 
That means that the power to create yesh mi'ayim only extends through malchus datzilos. Anything that is beyond that, even though it's a lukus, as we mentioned, neshamas of datzilos are a lukus. The neshamas of the malachim are a lukus, but they don't have enough power to create yesh mi'ayim because nifredu, they already, it's after the comment is finished, yeah. they became disconnected, even though that they're a lukus. Just like because the energy is still like there. Imagine the light comes through, right? The sun and comes it's stored, and, and and that's power. And what, once it bounces off, it's still light. It's still light, but it doesn't have the same power. It can't. It doesn't have the same power when you connect, when it's connected to the actual source. It's a certain power, and once it disconnects, even though it remains the same, it sees it's still light. It's still energy. It's a lukus. It's not a yesh. The neshamas are not a yesh. They're a lukus, but because. They, they are after, in other words, they already left the, the, the Kalim of, of Atsilus, and the Kav as of Atsilus, they have no longer the ability to create Yashmi Ayin. So, therefore, what we have over here in, sum, in summation is we have actually three categories. We mentioned we have two Yash, and then there's Alakus. As it turns out, there's almost like a hybrid in between, which is you have, you have Alakus, which is the, the, the youth spheres of Atsilus are Alakus, and then we have a whole list of things that are Yash, as we mentioned, right? And then we have this hybrid category in the middle, which is neshamas of tzaddikim, of the greatest tzaddikim, or neshamas datsilos, neshamas of malachim of datsilos, and also the thousands of worlds of Golgalta, they're a lukus, but because there's a tremendous tzimtzum, and because they're after, the kav doesn't shine directly in them, even though they're a lukus, and they don't have an identity, they, they don't have the ability to create yashmi And uh, one thing so I would... So what's this, if for those of you who are getting scared off, off, one second, yeah, getting yeah. scared off by the Kabbalah, Come next week, and next week I think we're already going to start getting some very, uh, next class, some very relevant and practical applications of the ideas that we're talking.